Hey guys, happy Sunday afternoon, uh, November 2018, stamp of the month, of assembly video number two, we're going to put to um, together um, kind of a, a different version of card number two, using some different papers and a different technique and a lot of fun stuff. So um, just in case we have anyone new joining on the video today, I want to give you guys just a really quick overview of kind of how this program works. Uh, stamp of the Month is a program that is uh, offered by Close to My Heart, and it's an exclusive stamp set that's only available during the month of its promotion. So this is a good look at the November. Thank you, Margie. Um, I appreciate you hopping in today. This is a good look at the um, November 18, 2000, uh, 2018 stamp of the month, and um, it's called Seasonal Trees, and I love it. I think that it's a darling, darling set. Um, it did not, however, have a sentiment, so I added in, hey Roxanne, I added in another stamp set uh, to provide some sentiments for the cards, but um, this is a stamp set that's originally $18.95, and when you guys place any $50 order on my shopping website, susanwilliams.ctmh.com, uh, you can get the stamp for only $5. So that's a savings of almost $14. So like if y'all are not listening yet, you know, saving money always makes me want to pay attention. So um, I love getting it at a discount, but um, I really like to um, give fun things away to my customers. So if you guys go onto my website and you get the stamp of the month for $5, you are also going to get from me. This is not a promotion from Close to My Heart. Uh, corporate. This is a promotion just from Studio Sue. So you're going to receive with the rest of your Happy Mail. Now remember, Happy Mail are free surprise gifts that you receive from me after you've placed an order. And that's just my way of brightening your day and thanking you for your business and giving you um, a few surprise goodies in your mailbox. So you're going to get that no matter what you order. Happy Mail always. And the larger your order, the more Happy Mail you're going to receive. So um, if you get the stamp of the month for $5, in addition to your other Happy Mail, you're going to get this pre-cut kit from me. And um, I've gone ahead and I've portioned out the embellishments for you. Uh, you're going to have it packaged in this little cardboard mailer. You're going to have all of the pieces of each of the cards sorted out in the with the card base and the envelope. Um, I've even taken the time uh, to go ahead and cut all the thin cut pieces for you. So all you have to do is use your brand new stamp set, stamp on those pieces, um, go ahead and get them assembled and you guys will be ready to go. I've kind of done all the hard work for you. Now you guys can either put these together right away when you get them. The Happy Mail orders usually just ship out um, Usually, sometimes the day you order, sometimes the next day. If I'm waiting on some supplies, it might take a couple days. But this is, I'm not going to wait till the end of the month to send these. You're going to get them throughout the month as you guys order. So you can choose to either go ahead and put your cards together when you get them yourself. You can put them together or you can wait until the online virtual class uh, where we put them all together in real time in a private Facebook group here. Um, and you guys can, it's just kind of a good night of, of girl fun, good fellowship. Uh, but if you guys choose to put them together before the uh, class if you want to do it yourself you can use the emailed files I'm not sure why my phone is not auto focusing listen to your phone I'm not really sure what it's doing um Oh, thank you, Joan. Well, I appreciate you, too, and I'm glad that it's appreciated. You know, as grown-ups, we don't usually get surprise craft goodies in our mailbox very often, but um, if you shop with me, you usually will. <laughs> so it's a good time had by all. <laughs> but um, you guys are also going to receive emailed uh, to your inbox the uh, files where you can very easily recreate uh, the cards again. You've got the measure the uh, recipe measurements down here. You've got the assembly photos for you to be able to put together the pre-cut kit. And then if you would like to uh, cut additional kits you have a full cutting guide to do that so you're going to get all of these emailed to you you're going to get the pre-cut kit shipped to you when you get your stamp set for only five dollars so i do encourage you guys to have a look at the november stamp of the month it's quite a darling set uh the home office when they created their artwork they uh, really focused on scrapbooking but i kind of wanted to show you guys a different route so we did a little bit of card making and i want to show you guys what they look like these are the actual cards that you are going to receive uh in your pre-cut kit okay so i love the saffron on this one this is a very autumn looking uh card this one has a little bit of a holiday day feel but you of course could um, kind of take it in any direction that you wish remember you guys have these pre-cut papers but you very easily can just flip them over if you rather don't like the pink and the green you can flip them over to use the um, patterns that are on the back but um, you are going to receive all of the pieces so that you guys can kind of um, take that whichever direction you might like um, I love 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 the color on this one this was a little bit of a challenge of that we I used the seasonal mix-ins paper collection it was a little bit challenging uh, because this paper collection is actually created to 
coordinate with every other paper collection in the idea book. Not necessarily to coordinate together, but I'm a rebel like that. So we have, we are coordinating or we're pulling them together and using all of them in one uh, card collection. And I think they really did turn out quite nicely. Um, this one I love, again, with the green and the pink cute little birdie there. We create recreated this one the other day and this was the uh, the second card that we created on uh, on camera. And so I showed you guys how to you how to create your own shaker window with a little bit of an acetate sheet and there is some of that really fun uh, reinker dyed sugar. This is just white table sugar and I used our close to my heart reinkers in raspberry. This one is raspberry and uh, dyed that and so now we have this really fun texture behind that acetate window there on that card and I think the, uh, the uh, raspberry looks really great with the rest of the card. Um, so that was kind of, this was the, of course was the original and um, we used the same cutting guide. I just increased my uh, little strips, grabbed some scrap paper for my little strips and um, it, looks, it looks very cute. Um, so totally the same cutting guide, just uh, different papers and kind of different techniques jazzed it up a little bit. So uh, the fifth final card that you guys are going to get in your kit is this one. And this is the one that we're recreating today. Uh, number two is on our agenda today. And um, we're just going to go ahead and get started. So this is going to be a little bit similar to the one we, we created the other day, but I'm going to show you guys a couple additional techniques and that type of thing. So um, we are going to, I told you guys that uh, the seasonal trees does not involve any sentiments. And if you were using it for a scrapbooking page, it probably wouldn't be a big deal. But since we're using it for cards, I really like the idea of having a sentiment on there. So I grabbed the Just a Little Something stamp set. And this is a great stamp set because it has some very small sentiments that you guys can place in quite um, quite small locations. But it also has some really fun interactive. You guys um, have seen some of the um, videos that we've done where we're actually pulling open uh, treat containers or we're pulling off like the um, strips um, to get something open. Well, there's a lot of really fun sentiments on here for that. There's, you know, we've got the Open Me, Open Me that we've used and congrats, you've pulled it off and just a little something special for someone special um, tear here stuff like that um, just really practical um, sentiments you guys can use for some of those interactive treat containers that we've been doing a lot of videos on right here on the business page so this is the stamp set that I chose to use with this kit now if you guys um, want to get the November stamp of the month to put together this pre-cut kit and you don't want to purchase the stamp set if you have another stamp set that has small sentiments then you're good to go you do not have to grab this one but it is is on the supply listing for you so you guys are aware of um, what you would need to get if you wanted to recreate them just like me. So we're going to go right ahead and get started. Uh, today we're going to use <clears throat> a strip from the Oh What Fun paper collection, which is this really pretty pink here. The uh, gray with the white snowflakes is from the Tis the Season paper collection, which is our traditional, um, it's the traditional red and green uh, with a gold um, type of Christmas. When you think Christmas, those are probably the colors that you think of. Me, when I think Christmas, this is kind of like what my brain goes to. I love the hot pink and, and that type of thing. So we're going to still use a little bit of that silver uh, foil paper. We've got a little bit of the um, the ballerina cardstock back here. So we're just going to go right ahead and get some of this put together. And we're going to create another shaker window, guys. Um, and we're going to use a couple different things to fill the inside of it, which I love doing things a little bit different. Um, so we're going to go right ahead and I'm going to adhere down the silver foil paper just near the bottom of the ballerina cardstock. If I will get pay attention, I can line up my cardstock on my Versamat and I'll make sure that my strip is not crooked that way. If I sometimes forget that and I am kind of sleeping when I do this. So um, we're going to snip off the ends. If you guys are getting the pre-cut kits from me, you're going to notice that some of your pieces are a little bit longer than they should be and that's on purpose because I tend to not be a perfect cutter every time and I would rather to have a piece that's a little bit longer than a piece that's too much it's too short I would rather have to trim off a little tiny bit and make sure it goes all the way to the edge of the paper than to have a piece that's too short that really drives me crazy so that is definitely reflected in the pre-cut kits that you guys are getting from me so I'm just gonna go right ahead and get all of these bottom pieces on let's see Okay, so now get this one onto our card base, 
and um, a little bitty quick, quick, quick slot swipe of the journaling pen, and then we'll get to the really fun part. Okay. I just love the pink and the gray and the silver. I just love it. And so then we're going to add in some. The tree is stamped in the original card. It's stamped in New England Ivy, which, again, you guys, is probably what you think of when you think of Christmas. It's your traditional Christmas green. But um, we're going to use the willow green, which, as you know, is a really super bright uh, springtime green color. We're going to use that, and it looks really great with the raspberry and the ballerina color. So just going to get this quick uh, journaling pen line around the outside. I know this is really boring to most of you guys because you probably don't do this on your projects. I do have to ask, though, of the people that are watching, do you guys use the journaling pen on your projects like me, or do you just leave the white space uh, bear. I am curious. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and start the fun part. So we are going to use the very same uh, scallop circle from the Fancy Tags Thin Cut set, just like I did on the original card. Um, here is my little sentiment strip that I'm going to just set aside and we'll stamp that in a minute. And then here is just a little teeny tiny piece of the clear acetate, okay? Um, and so you guys can use, I just had some acetate left over from some projects years ago that was in my stash already. Um, but you guys also could trim down a flip flap, you could trim down a page protector, um, just basically anything. It just needs to be uh, clear that you can see through it and something that's going to hold the insides inside, okay? Because we are going to use some more of that sugar. And the sugar that we're using today is dyed with the Willow Reinker. And if you guys want to see how easy it is to do that, um, there's a video right here on the business page. I literally just, not all the time like me, but sometimes. <laughs> and Joan doesn't use it at all because you can't do it straight like me. Um, but it's really not too straight, Joan. Don't worry. I'll work on you. We will get you converted. It'll totally be fine. <laughs> um, but if you guys want to see how easy it is to dye this sugar, um, it literally takes like, I don't no, 30 seconds probably and I just mix it right here in this little baggie and it I oh my gosh it's just so fun I don't really um the shimmer uh the sugar has a little bit of a shimmer to it almost so it just I don't know if it's kind of fun to use something that's a little bit like glitter uh but we don't have to worry about getting matching glitter because now you can just dye your sugar uh to match your projects because you have every color in our re-inkers re to use so I loved this idea and you guys are going to see this on tons of more projects. So again, we're going to use it on the project today, but we're using the willow. So we're just going to go right ahead. If I can find, whoops, hang on. If I can find my little mat up here, I keep it up here on my um, stand. Okay. So this is just the piercing toolkit mat, the Fiskars mat, and I love stamping on the back of it. It has the best stamping surface ever, 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 ever. Okay. So we're going to stamp our our tree, just like we did in the um, original here, we're going to stamp the uh, main image of the tree in the archival black. And the reason why we're doing that is because this is a two-step stamping process. And pardon me. And so if you did not use a permanent ink, if you didn't use the permanent black, um, there is a chance that when you stamped on top of the black with the green, that the ink would reactivate the dried ink in the black and it might smudge or smear or run just a little bit. And we don't want that to happen. So I always, always, always will use the archival black. I don't even use the regular black anymore. In fact, I'm not entirely sure that I even have a regular black ink pad on my desk. I'm not entirely sure that I do, but always archival black for me. And, um, you know, it's just a dollar more than the regular black. So if you guys are going to get a brand new black ink pad, you might as well get the archival black. Um, but we are inking up our, um, inking up our, let's see, what is it we calling it? The root, the, the root, the stem, the branches. I have no idea what we're calling it, um, but we're inking it up. I am going to continue with the original design where I want that whole of the tag kind of up here in the upper right. So I've turned my um, I've turned my circular uh, image that way so that it's still going to be placed up there in the upper right. And then as you guys will see, this tree is quite a bit longer. The, 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 um, the, um, oh my gosh, you guys, the, the, what, what are we calling? What's that part of the tree? The bottom part. Oh my gosh. I'm so totally asleep. Anyway, whatever we're calling it, uh, it is too long to fit on this circle here. So what I like to do is I just will cover it up with a sticky note. I don't want the, um, I don't want the, the, not the branch. Oh my gosh. Yes. Cat, the trunk. 
Holy cow, the trunk. Heavens, thank you, darling. The trunk. And Devin, thank you, guys. Oh, my gosh. I'm telling you. I didn't get very much sleep last night. It is clearly showing. So we, we want the trunk. We're gonna just going to kind of mask off the trunk. And so this, of course, is the technique you guys can do if you are like me or not like me and you don't like to cut your stamps up. You guys see some of my videos where I actually will take the image and I'll cut it because I don't like to mask. I don't really like that extra step. If you don't like to cut your stamps, this is how you can block off a portion of your stamp to either stamp it in a different space or change change the ink color or whatever, but it's just as easy as a post-it note, okay? So this is what we're using today. I'm just um, po putting a post-it note down here underneath so that um, I don't want to go all the way to the bottom. I want it to stop, so I still have this pretty white uh, border around the outside here. So we're just going to go right ahead and um, ink it up with our archival black. Okay, perfect. All right, and then pull off your sticky note and you're good to go. All right, so are done with the archival black. And then we're going to stamp the leaves in the willow, which again, I told you guys, this was like a really br pretty bright green. Um, the raspberry, of course, with the uh, pixie is the color of the dots here. And I think the willow just coordinated perfectly because I like to be a little bit different. I'm not really like a traditional red and green Christmas kind of girl. So we're inking up our leaves in the willow. And I do so love that uh, we can see right through our stamps so we can see exactly where we're stamping and um, usually, maybe not all the time, usually we have um, great coverage and good position every single time. So, let's see if we'll get this one on here. Perfect. Okay. So now the fun part, you guys. We have done, um, let's see, a little bit of stamping. I guess we will go ahead and put... No, I'm going to wait until we see where our thin cut is going to be. We are going to kind of carry over the same technique that we did in the previous card. I love the idea of punching out the heart thin cut on top of our tag, and then we're going to build our own shaker uh, element behind it, okay? You guys know that lately we've been doing a lot of shaker elements, but we're using the uh, foam circles and the acetate windows that Close to My Heart has provided for us, and you guys will find all of that um, on page 135 of the idea book. And um, But we are actually going to, I wanted to use a much smaller element uh, with the little heart here, so we're just going to kind of make our own, and I'll show you guys how very easy it is to do that, okay? So I think what we're going to do is I would like to place my my heart probably I'm still planning on using placing my small uh, sentiment here on the bottom left so I think what we're going to do is place the heart right over here and I do uh, usually keep a little bit of scrap washi tape uh, on my dies uh, the dies specifically that we want to stay in a specific location um, usually my circles and stuff like that that I'm just cutting out cardstock pieces are really not a big deal but if I have a die that I want to position somewhere when I move it over to my cuddle bug plates <clears throat> I don't want that to jostle or move around or anything like that so I will usually just add a little tiny piece of washi tape and the washi tape usually just stays attached to the die when it goes back on the magnetic sheet with no trouble. Um, but the great thing about washi tape is that it's a low tack tape and when you get done with the die and you pull it up, it's not going to take any of the color with it. It's not going to pull off any of the pattern paper. It's not going to rip anything because it is such a low tack tape. So if you guys um, don't craft with it already in, a, in an artistic way, uh, you might consider using it in more of a functionality um, portion of your creating um, because it is such a great um, with, you know, holding, like when we were creating all those iris paper uh, Piece of, those iris uh, paper piecing portions, we have to have something to hold our card base onto that pattern, and the washi tape serves a great purpose for that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over to my cuddle bug, guys. And I'll always have to mention this, um, A plate and a B plate always. And then your top plate, uh, your third plate is always determined by uh, what you're actually doing. So if you're embossing with an embossing folder, your third plate would be another B plate. So B for boss, emboss. Um, if you're cutting, which is what we're doing today, your third plate is a C plate, C for cut. Um, I always have to say that in a video because every time I say it, someone always messages me and says, Susan, oh my gosh, I've been crafting forever and I never even heard that trick. <laughs> so I always have to tell you guys that. Um, so I'm just running it through my cuddle bug right next to my table. Um, whenever I use uh, the cuddle bug on the table where my phone is, it seems to make you guys a little bit dizzy, and I don't want to make you see sick. So that's why I take it um, over to the other room. So now we're getting to the fun part. Okay, so what we're going to do, 
what we're going to do is we're just going to flip this over. And again, we're making our own shaker window, guys. And I tell you, I've been telling you guys that since we've started making all of the shaker cards, I don't even use the foam tape anymore. I only use all of my uh, leftover pieces that are on the insides of our uh, the shaker foam circles. Uh, but this is the one instance that I am going to get my foam tape out because it is going to make it quite a bit easier to create this element here. So what we're going to do is remember that little um, acetate scrap that I have. This is just, let's see, two inches by two inches, and it even might be a little bit big. In fact, I think I'm going to trim off just the corners, just for the sake of this being a circular uh, tag, where the one that we did the other day was very uh, square down here at the bottom. So we didn't have to cut any of the uh, bottom off, but I think we were going to do that today. Yeah, that will be perfect. Okay, so we're just going to add um, enough adhesive around the outside that this uh, is going to, that it's going to hold this little acetate, basically an acetate scrap here. And this is going to serve as our... Um, the front of our shaker window okay so then next we're just grabbing a little bit of foam tape and you guys I tell you there is nothing to this at all absolutely nothing to this you just have to uh, place it in such a way hello Margaret thank you for hopping in darling uh, you just have to place it in such a way that it's gonna kind of seal up all of the inside things okay but there's really no right way or wrong way to do it as long as you've sealed up all of the stuff on the inside Okay, keep going. Almost there, darlings, almost there. Oh my gosh, you guys, though, um, we went to have lunch after church today, and our waitress told us that um, we, we, you know, I guess know we live in a really small town, so when you go to dinner, you usually know everybody that's in the restaurant, but our waitress, who we know by name, and she says, Suze, did you hear that uh, we're supposed to get um, three to seven inches of snow tomorrow? And I said, uh, no, had no idea. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I don't know about anybody else, but we're supposed to get a uh, winter blast. It's already been pretty cold. It got down to, I think, 12 uh, last night and the night before. It's been getting pretty cold already. Um, so I'm not really looking forward to it. Winter is kind of like not my jam, but um, I'm pretty blessed that I have a job where I literally don't have to leave the house ever unless I want to. So that's pretty great. <laughs> okay, so you guys see how we have... We have our um, acetate on the bottom, and then we have our foam tape, and it's not it's not put on there pretty like. It's just sealing up all of our insides, okay? So um, what we're going to do is we're using some of the uh, clover dyed sugar, and what I want to do is I want to also use some of the uh, sequins that were colored with our shin hand marker, and I use the cherry pink shin hand marker, and it matches perfectly with the raspberry color and I'm telling you guys like perfect okay so what I did <clears throat> was I took of uh, the loose sequins that you guys have seen me use many times um no you had no idea you're sure you'll get snow I know Joan right yeah because you guys are even close you guys were closer than we were because you're south of us and I um, mean it was showing the further south you guys were also going to get some wintry mix like they were calling for freezing rain and all of that when she told me that of course I had to like get right on my phone and go to KY3 because I wanted to see how bad it really was and she wasn't kidding it's it's they say it's actually coming so um yeah you guys are probably going to get hammered too I'm really sorry to be the bearer of bad news <laughs> Um, but these are the loose sequins, you guys, that we use in all those shaker uh, elements. And if you're like me, you add glue dots on the back because you like to use, um, use them as adhesive back to bling as well. But what I did was I grabbed some of the silver sequins that were not the shiny sequins. They are like the, um, almost like I would maybe consider them a matte sequin, a matte silver. And so what I've just done is I went ahead just for the sake of time and I went ahead and I colored some of them. Uh, but I will show you guys how easy it is to color them. I have a couple here that I didn't do. So I just, you guys can, um, you can hold them down with your finger if you want. You can, you could put a glue dot on them if you wanted to. Like if your end result was an adhesive backed gem, you could go ahead and put them down on a piece of acetate and color them after they were stuck down and then just peel them up um, if you would like to do that. Or you can use tweezers like me or a piercing tool or a pair of scissors or something to just kind of hold them from getting the alcohol marker all over your hand. But um, it is so quick. Woo! Well, if you can get the dog on things to stay. I'm using my left hand, which is not ever a good idea for me. 
but um, if you can get them to hold, be held still so you're not getting the alcohol marker all over your hand. But you guys, oh my gosh, it's not even, I know that you're not going to be able to see with my light, but it's not even like a hot pink. It's a metallic pink. It is a metallic hot pink, and they look fabulous absolutely fabulous so I did grab the larger sequins just because when I got them in there I'm only coloring the front side and I wanted the front side to always show and I was afraid if I got some of the smaller sequins that when they started to shake around in there pardon me they might get be able to flip over and I didn't want the silver to show I only wanted the pink so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to add them on my shaker window face up and we're going to hope for a good end result because I really want, um, I want the green and the pink to show, but I don't really want the silver to show. So I'm just adding a bunch of them in here. And this is going to be a shaker element where I actually don't really want a lot of wiggle room in there. You guys hear me say when we create, um, like here's one that's right next to me. Uh, the fun part about, this is the Holiday Sparkle Kit, by the way, you guys, that's still available on our websites. They, it was only available in October, but they extended it because they had some left. So, um, but these are, see the fun of a shaker window is that they're going to flutter and fly around, right? That's the fun part of a shaker window. Well, this is still going to be a shaker window, but I really want it all to be kind of snug in there just similar to the original um, card that we created the other day so I'm gonna pack this in here pretty good and this is not normally how I create my shaker elements they're usually pretty loose in there but we're gonna go ahead and um, kind of pack some stuff in there so we've got our sequins there and I have enough for another card it looks like then we're gonna go ahead and just add some of the willow sugar and this uh, does make a mess on your craft space terribly messy um, but it's just quite fun I just really do enjoy um, really really do enjoy the sugar and it has such a really pretty green you guys I tell you if you do not um, if you have not um, done that yet dyed some sugar you are missing out because it is too too fun and I just noticed what I did you guys is I always tell you I try to plan these videos so well where um, I try to play in this video so well where I have all my stuff here and I just realized I forgot my back piece of cardstock. So we're just going to trim this down. This will work fine, I think. It just has to cover because remember, we have to find a way to keep all of our insides inside. So that is really the only thing you have to worry about. You really don't even have to worry about color because no one's going to see it anyway. Uh, rain and snow is good out here in the west. Um, lowers the fire hazard. Oh my gosh, yes, Judy. The fires out there, I'm not sure how west you are, but the fires out there, they've been all over the news and they've just been awful. I'm so sorry. It breaks my heart for all the people that are, you know, the wildlife and the people that are losing their homes. And I, I just couldn't imagine. You know, we don't, we don't struggle with that here in Missouri, but... Um, we have really fun things like tornadoes and stuff like that, but we don't have we don't have fires like that for sure. Okay, guys, so we're just peeling off these little foam pieces. So now we will be able to stick our little piece of cardstock there. Get it really well sealed because you don't want that sugar flying out when you get this attached to your card, okay? Okay, looks like we're pretty well sealed. Pretty well sealed. I don't know how you guys feel about grit. I can't deal with grit. It kind of dry. Like, I don't. I don't even walk around my house with no socks on. It kind of drives me crazy. So no grit for Sue's. So we have to uh, kind of wipe that off. And I went over the top of my little tag hole here. So I'm just gonna kind of cut that away. Again, guys, crafting on the fly. Crafting on the fly. Um, so just cut that away. Oh my gosh, look how cute that is. Oh my gosh! Okay, that's cute. That's absolutely cute. Oh my gosh. That's darling. Okay, sorry. I Maybe I'm the only one that's excited, but that's darling. Okay, so we are going to... Oh, that's so cute with the clover and the raspberry. That's so darling cute. Oh, and it looks like I got a little bit of a green blunder up here. So let's see if we can trim that off just a little tiny bit. Maybe we'll pretend like we meant to do it, even though we didn't. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of my mink twine, which is, again, is the same twine that we used on the original card. And I'm a little bit quirky with my twine. I don't really like to have the creases in it. So um, I will just grab my bone folder and my finger and run it through there, and that's going to get the creases out. I just, I don't know, creases kind of make me crazy. Kind of like the grit. 
kind of make me crazy. So, oh, thank you, Karen and Joan. Thanks, guys. I'm so glad you hopped on. So, so glad you guys hopped on. I wasn't sure that my internet was going to cooperate when I got home from church today, and it seemed to be doing okay, so I thought, well, it's as good a time as any. So, we are just, I have, um, let's see, maybe we'll just do four ends instead of six. I grabbed one too many, and we're just going to add the same type of bow here that we have in the original card. And I'm just taking, I've just folded it, the ends, and I'm just peel, um, pushing it through the hole here. This is, there's nothing to this at all. Loving the green. Me too. Me too. I love the willow with the bright pinks. I love it. It's a perfect green. Perfect, perfect. So these might not be Christmas colors in everyone's eyes, but they're darn sure Christmas at my house. Darn sure Christmas at my house. Okay, so we have this pulled through. What I'm actually going to do is just grab a doo -doo -doo, teeny, tiniest bit of foam tape to kind of hold hold my little um, twine there because there's really nothing holding it there. When I cut it off, it's going to be a very short uh, end there, and it might come unraveled if someone's um, fiddling with the card. So we're going to just... Put a little piece of foam tape there, and um, we won't have to worry about those pieces coming off. So I'll just go right ahead and sturdy these edges up a little bit. Oh my gosh, you guys. I love the green with the hot pink. Love, love, love. Okay. So we're starting this up a little bit in the hopes that I will be able to stamp the stars that I forgot earlier on top of here. So I probably wouldn't normally use this much foam tape, but I am today because I'm hoping that I can get it really flat so that I can stamp a couple of the hot pink stars up here. Oh my gosh, you guys, that is so cute. Look at that. That's darling. That's absolutely darling. Okay, I'm quiet now. Sorry. I can't help it. I just get excited. This is my, my favorite job in the whole wide world. Okay, we're going to attempt this. If I butcher it, we're just going to continue with the video and I'll fix it later. I'll dismantle. Um, so we are going to, these are just a couple of the additional um, images that you guys will find in the November stamp of the month. So we've got, there's a lot of really fun stuff that they've included with the with the um, stamp set. You've of course got all the different trees uh, and the, um, the actual shapes of the trees themselves, but then the different leaves. But you've got fun things like um, you can do snow. You have uh, even, it looks like this is maybe a little piece of grass, uh, type of grass thing. You probably can see it a little bit better on this one that's not been inked up. But you've got a bird's nest here. You have a bird house here. You've got some Christmas ornaments here, some different type leaves. This is the little birdie that we put in uh, the card the other day. Um, then you've got some uh, several different stars here. And I just think that it turned out, it's going to turn out so well, I think, if we can get... Like we've done, we've stamped the separate, the two sizes of the stars on the original card. So if we can get this to work out, I think it's going to look really great. Whether it works out or not, I have no idea. We might, you might hear me um, yell and holler and scream here in just a second if this blows up in my face. I'm not really sure. We'll see. We will see. We'll check really quickly where we're going to put our... Maybe we won't have him covered up our heart. Maybe we won't cover up our heart. Oh my gosh. I don't know what we're doing, guys. I have no idea. Crafting on the fly. I told you, this is not a planned video. I didn't know, didn't really know what we were doing. Whew. Okay. Disaster averted on that one. Let's grab the smaller one. Get it really good and inked up. I could see a little spot there. Oh, that one worked out okay, too. I think one more up there in the top right, and then we'll be done with the little tiny bitty stars, and maybe we won't ruin this project. Yay! Okay. That turned out well. I was a little nervous. Okay. So, now we will be ready to... I'm just going to trim this um, in a little bit of a, a point, for lack of a better word. Um, and then we're going to... Fray it out with the piercing tool. Um, again, I'm just, it's so weird because my little tendencies and my um, preferences tend to make it into every single project. I don't usually um, change them. If I have the end of a tw of twine, I usually like to fray it out with my piercing tool. I don't really like just the, I don't really like the plain ends to be showing. So I think we are going to be ready to take all of these little pieces off. 
Look at all that mess on the back, you guys. No one will even know that you've got it back there because you're going to cover it up when you put it on your card. I love how we can make pretty things and no one ever even sees the mess. Oh my gosh, you guys, that is so cute. That is so cute. I don't know about you all, but um, after that holiday sparkle campaign that they gave us last month, and, and of course still currently going on until we sell out of them, um, I think I'm going to have probably all of my card, uh, my Christmas cards done before December ever even gets here. So that is super fun to me that I don't have to rush around when December gets here and work on my Christmas cards. So we're going to just grab... Um, this is the small uh, thank you that, again, was in that uh, additional sentiment stamp that we're using with the kit. And i um, just going to ink it up. Put them right here in the middle. Okay, perfect. And then you all know it's coming. Don't even act like you didn't know. We're just going to dovetail. On the ends and of course when you dovetail when I dovetail to get a symmetrical dovetail I will cut down the middle you're not even gonna know that that middle cut was placed there but it's gonna help you gauge where you're cutting from either edge okay that's pretty symmetrical for me I don't know if that's symmetrical for you guys but that's pretty symmetrical for me if you were to just begin cutting on one of the edges you're most generally gonna go too far or not far enough and you're gonna have to compensate with the other end and it just tends to be um, at least in my experience a a little bit lopsided but if you cut from the middle then you go from either side and you you cut up to that um, same mark it to me just reflects a much more symmetrical dovetail so we've cut our dovetails and then just a really super duper quick uh, run around with a journaling pen because well it's bare without it it's like going outside with no clothes on it's just not right I can't help it I know that I'm not the only one that feels that way, but I'm probably the only one that watches my videos that thinks that. Okay, so almost, almost, almost just took a few quick seconds. My biggest issue, my biggest challenge, I think, is picking up my pieces with these crazy nails. I love to look at them, but they're not worth a hoot to work with, I tell ya. Okay, so... Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Maybe we'll put him down here. Okay, maybe we'll stick him down here in the bottom left. Maybe we won't put him on the top there. Okay, so just grabbing a few of these extra squares here that were inside my shaker windows. I tell you guys, this is like the best thing ever. If you buy the shaker circles and the acetate windows, you have all of these pre-cut foam squares that you will like never have to buy foam tape ever again as long as you live. It's crazy. I have a stack probably about like this. Um in my one of my uh, adhesive boxes uh, because I am I'm honestly accumulating them faster than I can use them it's crazy so yes I think that will work and we may even add now that I'm sitting here thinking about it maybe we will add a few maybe we'll add some pink bling around here yes maybe we'll do that okay so we're gonna grab we are going to grab just some of the small glue dots those are the medium glue dots Grabbing small glue dots, guys, and um, this is my favorite part about these sequins is that how easy it, it, it truly is to add adhesive to the back of them. Like, ridiculous easy. Not even funny. Um, so it's kind of one of those things, like, they give us bling, they give us bling that doesn't have adhesive on the back, and I'm like, huh, I'll show you. And then before you know it, we have adhesive. So, it just works out perfect. I love how we can use them for the shaker elements or... Uh, for adhesive backed bling. Oh my gosh, you guys, that is so cute. Okay, maybe I'm the only one that thinks it's cute, but it is darn cute. So totally different. Same cutting guide, you guys. Um, same exact cutting guide, so you can absolutely use that cutting guide that's provided when you guys get the kit. Um, but you can absolutely switch out your papers. Um, you can incorporate additional techniques or different ways of doing things um, just to kind of jazz them up a little bit. So you guys could cut the whole thing out. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate that, sweetie. Uh, you could cut them all out. You could cut a whole kit out and do them all different ways, and you wouldn't have one card that looked exactly like mine. It's crazy. Um, which, that's the fun part about um, crafting as well. And Joan, if you're still watching, my KY3 app keeps putting me warnings up on my screen as I'm doing this video, telling me, warning, warning, snowstorm coming. <laughs> so my uh, Missouri friend, I'm so sorry. We will just be grouchy about the snow together. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, that is what we look like, um, what we've got today. Guys, I think it turned out really good. Oh, Devin and Kat, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. I'm so glad you tuned in. 
Um, but I think it turned out really cute. I love the pink and the green. I love, love, love it. It looks great with the metallic sequins, or yeah, the metallic sequins and that um, silver glitter. Looks perfect. Yay! Thank you, Margaret. Okay, guys, that concludes the video today. If you want to grab the November stamp of the month, susanwilliams.ctmh.com. And if you guys want to see all of those cards up close and get the supply listing for that November stamp of the month kit that you guys can receive free from me, just hop over to the blog. It's the just crazy blessed uh, dot blogspot.com. And um, it's all the stamp of the month uh, kits are in the in the left sidebar. And so also remember, guys, whenever you grab, uh, when you, your order for $50 and you're able to get the stamp of the month for five, you're going to get the cutting guide and the kit for the November stamp of the month, but you're also can re you can also pick two more cutting guides, uh, from my website as well. So you can get a total of three with your $50 order. So it's like all the free things just keep on coming over at my blog. So if you have questions about it, um, please, uh, just comment under the video or send me a private message. I'm always happy to help. Um, I hope that you guys are having a wonderful Sunday. Sunday and anyone that's in the path of snow, I am sorry. <laughs> so have a good afternoon guys and I'll see you later.